we're going to kind of get that out of our attention here. And what I want to do is I want to work on some Boolean operations. So as I mentioned before, that's basically taking primitive geometric forms, put them together, laying them however you want to look at it. You know, you can lay them on top of each other. You can extrude them, bring them together, separate the faces. But taking those simple forms and breaking those down in a way into volumes, but using them to create more complex forms. So let's try it real quick. So there's two ways um, that I think are pretty helpful about going about doing it. So the first one we can do is I'm just going to use my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw my first rectangle here and I'm going to type in 100 feet comma 100 feet. That gives me my uh, two main directions for this particular square. I'll hit enter and it should give me a 100 foot by 100 foot square. So before I do anything else or any kind of uh, rotating or anything, I'm going to go ahead and click on this. I'm going to double click it. And what that'll do is it'll select the face and the edges. And like we did in our previous lesson, I'm going to right click and I'm just going to make this a group. That easy. So then I'm going to get my next uh, primitive form here. Let's say we wanted to add an entrance to the corner of this particular building and we're going to do it with a polygon. So I can come to this corner. I can draw this in now. And I just need to tell them uh, what kind of a radius we want. Let's say we want 25 foot radius. It's going to be a pretty big entrance there. So now I'm going to double click on it, getting the face and all its edges highlighted. We'll right click. We'll make that a group. So now what we could do is we can extrude each one of these, you know, and they're going to basically behave independently because they're separate groups. So if you wanted to extrude this particular element, I'll double click on it. Go to push pull and we can move that up. We'll say 25 feet. And that's just for the entrance. And then we could do the same thing here on this side. And I want to extrude or push pull this 20 feet. So I want that entrance to be just a little bit larger. And I want my model, my basic model, to show that this will actually be roofed around here. So there will actually be a certain way that these pieces of geometry actually connect here. So how do I go about doing that? So if we take a look at it now, you can see there's no straight line. And how I know that this geometry is connected properly is we'd actually see a nice hard, dark line going in here. So basically, it's just two components kind of blended together. Now, if we changed our view and we went, changed our face style to an X-ray style, you can basically see what I'm talking about here. So it's two different forms just basically set together. And I don't know if you can tell here, but this area here, the more visible dark line, if I rotate around, you can see that's the area that's visible. And then there's this area where that line actually kind of grays out, and that's because it actually goes inside this geometry. That area where it goes from hard dark line to that gray line there's an intersection right there. So I'll kind of go with this uh, tool here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We snap in place and there's an intersection. That's where our two groups intersect. And what we want to do is we want to actually bring these together so that the faces connect and that there's hard lines in place so we can manipulate how these things are connected and not just go with some real basic vague two pieces of geometry plopped together. We want to show how it's connected, how the spaces work with each other. So to do that, as long as we're in groups, all we really need to do is click on one of our elements, right click on it, and you'll see intersect faces. I'm going to do this with model. So I'm going to click with model. And when I do that, those lines I mentioned to you appear. So now we have these hard lines that actually show how this geometry is connected. And what it did essentially, it created faces I can now edit to create this to be how I want it to be. So essentially, my goal for this particular little design here is I want to have my entrance, but I want this to actually be carved out within that entrance. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So now that we have some lines and some additional faces and edges in place, I can come in here and I can double click on the one I want to change, and I can erase anything I don't need. So right now, I can actually probably come in here, so we'll double click on this guy and see if there's anything we can erase. It might actually work better in an x-ray view, so we'll go to view. Let's change our face style to actually wireframe. And now I can come in here and erase any geometry that I don't think I'm going to need. Because I can double click on this element, and let's say I want to get rid of this area here. I want this to actually carve into my square. Well, I want to click on this line, but if I highlight this line, then I want to get rid of this segment, the point where this intersects. I can't do it because it's all one line. So really, the only... There's a trick or a work around for that is grab your line, go from this point to the point you want to delete, and draw in that segment. And you'll notice that color appears there. So now we have this line and then this line segment. And this portion is the one we wanted to delete. So I can go ahead and erase that, and it won't affect 
the geometry I had in place for my rectangle. So if I want to do the same thing here, I want to carve this out. I'll go with my pen tool. I'll go from this end to that end. And we'll erase that segment. You see how that works? So I can go ahead and get rid of this one here as well. Although that might be a column if we're working with it structurally, but that might come up a little bit later. So now I want to go ahead and get rid of these, the line work that's down here as well. So let's see if I can see it. There's a segment not there. That's good. But there is a segment here I want to get rid of. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. So we'll go from here to there. And you'll see I have a black line, blue line, which lets me know I have two different segments. So I can erase this line, and I can now clean out that geometry. So if I go ahead and click out of here, and let's say I went back to my X-ray view. Go to view. Change our face style to textures. And X-ray. You can now see that this is actually carved into my square here. So it's pretty, pretty easy stuff, pretty simple, pretty straightforward as well. So that's one way we can actually do that. So the trick is getting your geometry in place, making sure there are groups. But then, you know, once you have it selected, right-clicking, going to Intersect Faces, and you want to intersect with Model. Now, there's a much simpler way to actually work with this, and if you kind of think about things beforehand, before you're doing your extrusions. So I could take the same concept, cut out a couple of steps, and pretty much get the similar result. So I can go, we'll go rectangle, draw my rectangle, we'll say 100 feet, comma 100 feet. We'll grab our polygon, go with the same radius here, we'll say 25, actually, before we do that, scroll in here, go to the center point, we'll say 25 feet, and now what we have here, because SketchUp works with surfaces because we drew these two and they're overlapping so we don't just have one rectangular surface and one polygon surface we now have this surface this surface and this surface so if I wanted this to carve into my square I can just simply come in here erase that come in here erase that and now I can extrude these if I wanted to or we could double click on it let's do that let's double click on it group it double click this one group it and now we can extrude it and we'll get the same desired effect we we're trying to get before so we'll double click this one go to push pull 20 feet and I'll come to this one here double click it push pull we'll do 20 feet as well, well actually I think that was 25 feet so I'll add, add an additional 5 on there so now what we have is pretty much the same effect, but this one's a little bit cleaner. Um, we have some additional line work here, but not a problem. We can actually come in here and get rid of this extraneous line work. Now I'm going to keep this one because this one will actually define my edge. So we'll want to keep this line, but we really didn't need that one. But you can see, you do the same thing on this side here. So doing it the second way is pretty fairly straightforward if you understand how the surfaces work and the portions of your geometry and you also break it up in groups but you have two ways of going about doing it you can just simply draw, draw geometry together plop them together and then you know uh, erase whatever lines you want to create whatever face or you could use the right click option and just intersect your faces manually uh, like we did here uh, pretty much get the same result from each one um, maybe a couple of little extra clicks for the other uh, but I find that the effect is the same um, but this one I find is just you get cleaner results less clicks than trying to do it this way there's a lot of guesswork involved kind of thinking about which face is intersecting and how am I gonna get rid of this line and you gotta draw double lines but you have two options of going about doing it so I'm excited to be able to show you that and this is a way we can again take simple geometry bringing it together to create more complex geometry that might be hard to do uh, if we didn't use face intersecting or creating our own little surfaces by uh, adding or deleting edges. So and that's our Boolean segment here. Pretty short segment, but it's a pretty straightforward concept. So in our next lesson, we're actually going to go over folding and rotating surfaces, and we're going to take a look at some of the cool effects that happen when you work with those options. SketchUp, by definition, your surface has to include a closed loop system of three line segments that are connected at their endpoints. 
So what that means is if I draw a surface, it has to have at least three line segments that connect at a closed loop system. And you know you've created a, sur a surface when you actually draw this in, so everything is snapped, and there, you know your surface is created with a, either a color, a texture, or something is applied to it. So I'm going to switch my view really quick. Right now we've got an x-ray applied to this, and I want to see all my surfaces. So I'm going to get rid of that x-ray. But you can see the bare minimum is a triangle. That's all you need to create your surface. So we're going to work with a rectangle, kind of what we've been doing. So this one, I'm going to keep it dimensions are the same. We're going to say 100 feet, comma, 100 feet. So now that we know what we know about surfaces, the minimum standards for a surface, let's play around and see how we can manipulate these guys. So I can click on a surface in this case, and I'm just going to get the face. If I double click on it, it's going to give me the face along with these edges. And I can use my move button to move it any position I want to, and it'll maintain its dimension and its shape as long as the entire entity is selected. I can also rotate this thing simply by going to my rotate and my protractor will automatically appear. So the key with working with the protractor is have your element selected but hold down your left click button and move it around so you can get it oriented in a way that you want to flip it. So in this case if I'm holding down my left click button I can move this to my green axis or whatever axis I want to to uh, go ahead and make that rotation. So I'm going to click, draw my little extension, and I'm going to rotate this up. And I can then rotate the surface either by doing it manually. You can see your angles down there at the bottom right of the screen. Or I can type in my value. In this case, I'll type in 45. And there we go. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty easy stuff as well. So let's control Z and kind of go back there. So that's working with a simple surface itself. We can rotate it, twist it. Uh, we can even distort it by grabbing some of just the endpoints. Well, I can go to move and I can distort the surface simply by grabbing that endpoint and dragging it however I want to. But another great thing about working with surfaces is I can divide the surface and I can also rotate and twist the different surfaces within this one large surface. So essentially, we're creating subsurfaces. So if we used our line tool here, I can click there. And let's say I wanted to come to this point, this midpoint here. I want to create a roof pitch. So essentially a roof, if you think about it, is two surfaces, be this side and this side. And if you wanted to create a pitch for this really easily, all we needed to do is grab this particular edge, go to move. We can grab it wherever we want to, and we can move it up to a specified height. In this case, I know I'm moving up because I'm moving along the blue axis. And if I have an idea about the you know height of my attic or something, or any kind of information like that, I can type in the value. We'll say 20 feet, which might be a little exaggerated. But what we did was we created a pitch. Basically, by grabbing this one line segment that is shared by these two faces. And by moving it up, only that portion of each one of these surfaces moved up, creating a pitch. And then, just like anything else, we can come in and uh, push-pull these if you want to to add a thickness. You know, like so, and we can create a nice little thickness for our roof. So it's pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. So in addition to grabbing these edges and also grabbing points to do some distortion, we can also rotate these elements as well. So this particular face here, I can go back to my rotate. Again, I'm going to hold this down, and I'm going to place this like so. And let's say we wanted to drop this down to where, you know, I don't have a specific value, but we can actually rotate that one particular face. And its shape and its dimensions will stay in place, while the other face that's actually attached to the one we're rotating will actually distort and stretch and deform. But this is kind of another way you can actually do some e experimentation with some forms. And um, you know, if you're really into the iteration process of design, where you like to work with, do some experimenting, as opposed to having a solid concrete idea in mind and I know that's what I'm going to build that's what I'm going to build and I'm going to make it let's say you're more into the iteration is I want to experiment with forms and then build it um, that's this is a way we can actually go about doing that so I'm going to go back to our flat surface here so before we move on to uh, making smoother surfaces another way you can actually work with surfaces is using your sandbox tools and to access those you could simply come up to the top of your uh, UI here and you can right click we can actually add that particular window uh, to this area. And that's exactly what I did here. I simply did the uh, right click that we did before. You click on Sandbox. It'll bring it up here. And this will bring your Sandbox tools.
And what this allows you to do, this will allow you to create those really cool surfaces, complex shapes, and maybe even some really unique looking curtain panels, but it will also help you create those smooth surfaces that we'll actually jump into in the, in the next lesson. But I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So in this case, I'm just going to double click on my surface. Actually, no, we won't do that. We'll actually create a brand new one. So we'll go here to our sandbox area. And we're going to say, from scratch, I want to create a sandbox, or it's also called a, a tin or T-I-N. So I'm going to click on that element. When I do so, you'll notice right here, I, it's going to let me specify my grid spacing. So right now, it's set the 10. If I wanted that to be a different value, I can type in 15 feet. I'll type in 15 feet. And I can then... come in here and just draw this out. So what's going to do, it's going to let me draw my first set of grids and it's going to let me draw my second. So essentially it's kind of like drawing a rectangle. You got to draw this direction and in that direction. And what that does, it automatically divides that surface up. So I can double click on this element and you can see I have a number of surfaces in here with a wide variety of edges. I can uh, double click on this, go to entity information access it, assign layers, add a name to it if I wanted to. But good thing about this is it reduces the amount of line work and thinking I have to do behind creating a surface. So when we did this one here, we had to actually come in and draw in our surface lines so we can manipulate this. But now what we can do here, I can double click on this element. I can select on any one of these faces or a number of faces simply by holding control. Go to your move button grab it anywhere you want in our case we'll go here and we can actually bring this up like so and it will create this really cool unique looking surface really boxy but it's getting to the point where we can probably create some curves so you see how we did that we simply just highlighted the faces not including the edges and just moved them up another handy tool when you have this surface divided like this is your uh, flip edge tool which is a quick way of doing what we were doing earlier when we were actually drawing in a diagonal so if I were to double click on this go back to my uh, fold tool flip edge or I can actually come in here to any one of my edges and set up where I want to fold this so in this case if I want to fold this line across this way I'll click on that and it'll create a nice little fold in there so let's try this on a flatter surface so what we'll do is we'll go back here and I'll control Z and bring this to a flat surface now let's try this so we'll go fold edge and in this case you just want to fold this edge it will create that nice diagonal so we could take that edge and fold it along that way so what that did was basically created a triangle out of the square and the triangle is going to give us a little bit more control because it subdivides that rectangular or square surface where if we were to try to move this move up it'd be a small plateau where if you try to move this up now let me move it by its diagonal we'll actually have a little peak and it'll create a little more complex forms than that flat plateaued shape when we just grab the simple face so the triangles are actually going to help you uh, get more control now in addition to using this flip edge we can double click on this as well and we can come back in here and we can go to add detail now what add detail will actually let us do come in here and we can click and hit escape after you click it'll automatically draw in the diagonal for us so we'll click, hit escape. Don't move your mouse or anything because if we click and then we move our mouse, it'll automatically let us make that adjustment. But if you just want to get our triangles in place, place them, click, hit escape, you'll get out of there. And then we can come back in after the fact and make whatever adjustments we want to make. So I can say move, so I can grab at this point and I can kind of move up wherever I want to. So let's grab from this center point. So you can see. As we're moving, you could tell we're moving vertically. One, because we're moving in the blue direction, but you can also see the shading and the, and the shadows coming from uh, the action we just created. So you can see what triangles kind of subdivide the surface and, and make it cool and make it easier to work with. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to show you how we can actually use these tools we just created or we just explored. And we're going to create a really complex looking uh, glazing or maybe even an exterior glazing system using a few simple techniques and a few of the tools we just use. So now that we know how to kind of manipulate, twist, turn and, and play with these simple surfaces, let's take those same tools, apply what we've kind of been doing throughout this course to create something with that. 
So I'll meet you in the next lesson where we'll take this surface and buildings are concerned. So we know how to click on this guy, manipulate and play. So let's see what else we can do with this. So what I want to do is I want to use this surface and we're going to use it to create skylights and also some kind of a cool exterior glazing for our buildings here. For both of these maybe. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to double click on our surface and I want to basically create more intersections which basically means creating smaller uh, squares and even more triangles so I can do that either by drawing lines but I'm gonna select my entire surface and I'm come up here to our sandbox tools and I'm gonna click add detail and when I do so it'll automatically update this and make this even more refined so we have a little bit more control so you can see how this is starting to come together so essentially what we want to do is take one you know you can see this is one side of our skylight this could be the other with a nice little pitch but to do something really complicated sometimes we gotta make it really simple and then use our, our tools that we have available to us just to simplify things even further and save time so I'll show you what I mean and don't panic when we do this here so in order to get our skylight system and our glaze system for our two buildings over here and there's gonna be a set of three by the way we're gonna actually need to delete most of this here so I'm gonna jump to top view Oh, jump back to that top view and I'm gonna double click and then we're gonna go from right to left as far as our selection goes and I want to delete everything within there so I'm gonna right click erase and now we have that one section here so now what I want to do is I'm gonna use the rotate button that we've been kinda of using so as long as I'm still in here and as you can see my dashed box we could still only rotate this element which is exactly what we want so I'll come in here rotate We'll come to this little origin here. Hold down your left mouse button and just kind of move around till you get to that area you want to get to. As far as uh, the orientation, you want to move it. We want to do it on the red axis. Drag your mouse out. Move up. Up. Oh, gotta select the entire thing here. Let's make sure we do that. There we go. So now we can do it here. So hold down your left mouse button. Click to that corner. Drag your mouse out, and we're gonna move this up. Oh, we'll say 25 degrees. So now what we need to do is just add a little bit more detail because remember this is just a, a mass but it's an important mass because it's a, a, a lighting detail. It's, it's an opening, it's glazing so we definitely want it to look good as well so, so people know what it is when we're placing it on our building. So what that means is not just having thin lines in these triangles, we need to actually add some framing, use a little bit of paint to paint in some openings and so on and so forth. So what we can do at this point here is I'm going to go ahead and start here is we're going to add the end pieces so that we can close this off. So I'm going to go from here and I'm going to click down on this area and I'm going to come across and I'm just going to click on this end piece and what it's going to do is allow me to snap to that distance I need to go to. So you see how I did that? Let's do the same thing to the other side here. So all you do is go from one end point. We'll don't even snap to this one. We're just going to highlight it and reference it and then move your mouse down and snap until you get to the red and then we're in good shape and then we can go from there go on up and then from this endpoint to this endpoint we gotta click because we need to make a closed loop system so you can see this face here is a different color than the rest so right click it reverse that face and it'll be a nice clean look for our model so on this other end here we can go ahead and close this off as well so from the last area we finished we'll go there and now we're going to offset to get our frame similar to what we did uh, in previous lessons so in here I'm going to offset three inches and what we need to do here is actually you'll run into this occasionally we've been kind of building this separately so I can click on this this is an element but this is still a group so all we really need to do in this case is highlight our group just temporarily explode it now highlight everything type in G We'll give it a name right now. We'll go Skylight. We'll create. And there we go. So now it's all one group. So now I can come back in here and now we can finish off this offset. Now just remember, um, if you're adding elements to a group, double click on it so you can avoid having to do this extra step we did. So now let's just go on ahead and get the framing done before we kind of move on to the next. So again, three inches. Same thing here. Click on the line. Bring it inward. Three, enter. Click on the edge until you see the face highlighted. Bring it in, three, enter. And we're just going to finish this all the way down here. And again, we want to get the main features of this because this is just simply conceptual massing. But, you know, making sure we have where our glass is and where our frame is is going to be very important. It definitely adds that 
somewhat of a sense of realism, but it makes people understand exactly what that building element is. And it makes your model look good, after all. So again, we're just going to bring this in. I'm almost done here. Come on this end. We'll do three. Three inches again. Bring it in and three. We'll bring it in and three. And let's see. We did it, took care of this side. Let's see if we need to take care of this side. Oh, looks like we do. So I'll bring this in three inches as well. So now all we need to do is paint this up. And then in the next lesson, we'll go ahead and finish this out. So I'm going to grab my paint bucket. Select your blue translucent. And let's just paint in all these areas here that we know mm, we're going to co consider to be our glass panels. So it's that easy. Make sure we get our end pieces. And I think we have one more end piece here. And that takes care of that. And that's will just be our first side of our model here. So, you know, we've already have it a group. So now what we can do at this point is I can right click on this and we're going to make this a component. Because what that means is we can then reference this a little bit later and use it for other projects if you wanted to. And I can reference it again throughout this project as well. So we're going to say, if it's not already a component, make a component, but it looks like it's already a component. So now really all we need to do is get, grab it. We'll go Control C, Control V. We'll place it. And I want to show you something really quick. So basically, this is a component. This component is the same as this component. So if I make any changes to this component, it's going to be reflected in this component if we modeled everything correctly. So let's test this out really quick. So we'll come up here. We'll do another uh, add detail. I won't really keep it, but it's just for temporary. And I want to add a detail there. And you can see, as I'm adding it here, it's showing up on this side. So we're in good shape as far as how we're modeling this. So I'm going to control Z just to get out of there because we really don't want to make any changes yet. But then I'm going to grab the one we copied. Let's right click it. And we're going to flip this one. If you can see here on the bottom, it says flip along. You should try to flip this along the green. And if it, that doesn't work, nope, we'll right click again. We'll go back to flip along green one more time. So we're going to right click. We'll do flip along. It's red. And that might actually be what we needed to do. So we're going to do one more test. I want to make sure that whatever changes I make to this are going to be reflected here. So if I do a change to this top area, it needs to be to the top area. So again, I'll double click and do a real quick test. And we're in good shape. So now all i got to do is bring this thing together. Grab this element. We'll say move. Grab this corner. Bring it. To, snap it to the place there. Now we're going to highlight everything. Hit escape to kind of clear out of that if you need to. But highlight the entire system. Type in G. Now we can say. Uh, maybe you could give it the, the full name. We could say um, one skylight. And we could say create. So now we have a skylight in place. So now I want these to be separated, oh, you know, maybe six or seven feet, six inches apart. And this is actually going to be a system. So we have a component for one skylight, but then I want a component for the entire thing as well. So we're going to say seven feet six. So now I can grab this. I'll say control C, control V. We'll place it here. And we now have two skylights. So we'll do it one more time. Go here, we'll move 7 feet 6 inches, 7 feet 6, control V, and we'll just snap it in place. Now earlier I neglected to delete the little extra detail we added there, so I'm just going to double click on that, double click on this again, just so we can edit this one element here. Grab my erase button, and we don't need these extra details. So I'll click back out here, hit escape a couple of times, and now we have our clean skylight system for three skylights. So now... We can grab all three of these. We can create another group. I'm going to say, if you want to group this one together, we'll say G. We could say three skylights. Say, booyah. So now we can click on this, and now it's all grouped as one. So I can now move this on top of my building. So I'm going to grab this on the bottom. So we can now move this to top of any one of our buildings. Right now, everything's hard to see. We've got to make an adjustment to our camera. So go to camera. Get rid of parallel projection if you having an issue seeing elements. So now we'll just come back in here and we can place this on our buildings, like so. So now we have a skylight for our building. Oh, just make sure you get it actually placed on the surface. That's going to be the key. So we can do like that, or we can even grab that same component. 
I can do control C control V we'll place it here we can also uh, not offset but rotate it grab a corner click it down go to this opposite corner here where we actually want to rotate it we want to rotate it along the red so then now we're gonna come up up and we're gonna rotate this 90 degrees so now I can grab this element grab it at the bottom bring it over here and now it becomes some kind of a cool glazed system and if I wanted to line it up with this top I can simply by going to this corner and we'll kind of use that point as a reference now I can grab these guys move them over and we've created either you know skylight system or even some kind of real crazy looking curtain wall opening system for our building so all this from a real simple surface so you can see the benefit of working with surfaces so it's definitely beneficial you can create some really cool elements with it as well so that's one one of many things you can do when you're working with surfaces um, creating these cool skylights and systems like this so one last thing we want to go over for our course here is we're actually going to work with creating um, some organic and curved surfaces now we've gotten really comfortable working with rotating a lot of these elements with 90 degree angles and crazy sharp angles but I want to show you to really make conceptual modeling complete or give you a good foundation I want to show you how to work and create some really curved and organic